you guys. Welcome to this edition of Bland County Survivor Man. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Guys, sorry about the background noise that's going on in this video, but I'm down here on the New River in Bradford, Virginia, right where the Ingalls Crossing was. And uh, the reason I'm doing this video is I've been doing a little bit of research on the uh, massacre that happened up in Draper's Meadows. that's up at the college, up at the uh, Virginia Tech College. And uh, I'm going to show you guys a video uh, story about what Mary Ingalls had to go through when she came back from Big Bone Lick, Kentucky, all the way back down here to Draper's Meadows, Virginia. Now, I'm just about a half a mile from the actual farm where they lived out the rest of their lives. Uh, and Mary, she lived to 18 and 15. But anyway, this is, this is an incredible story about survival. Uh, I wanted to do it just for a historical uh, video, just to show you what the river looks like. This is the new river right here. It's about a quarter mile wide. It's at, uh, right now at a little bit of the flood stage. But anyway, I'm gonna take you on a video journey. Uh, this is where the crossing was. This is where they had the ferry. This is where the Wilderness Road actually come across and went east to west from down towards uh, Williamsburg on down through Kentucky, Daniel Boone, Davy Crockett, the whole, those whole bunch of people followed this road through here. So anyway, I'm going to take you on Mrs. Ingalls' journey on the New River, show you some of the obstacles that she had to really suffer to get around when she did her uh, escape from the Indians and uh, came all the way back here to Draper's Meadows. Well, guys, right here is the gravestone for Mary Ingalls. And this precious woman is laying right here below this stone. And you can see the date on it. She died in 1815 and was born 1732. The woman who made the famous trek all the way from Big Bone Lick, Kentucky all the way back here to Draper's Meadows to be reunited with her husband who is buried right over here within 25 or 30 feet of this site. And here in fact is her husband's grave. She lived about 30 more years after he passed away in 1782. But when you read the story, follow the river, or you read the story about uh, William and Mary Ingalls, this is the place where they're buried. Guys, there's what the farm entrance looks like today. That's the place where this precious little lady lived. And like I say, sorry about the background noise, but that's just the way it is out here in this big bad world now. But that was Mary and William's farm. Guys, if you take a look there in the distance, you'll see the actual reconstructed cabin. That Mary Draper lived in, right there in Radford, Virginia, or right here in Radford, Virginia. But you can see it right there in the distance. It's like a little living history thing. And uh, I don't think it's open this time of the year. Well guys, right here is where the actual massacre happened, up, I'm pretty sure. This is now called the Smithfield Plantation, who acquired this property after this event happened in 1755. This is where the Indians swooped down, swooped in, done their killing. took their captives and took off in that direction right there toward the New River. Imagine that. This quiet little place. Ransacked and raided by Indians. 
Five of the inhabitants here were killed. More of them, including Mary Ingalls, was taken hostage. and taken all the way to Ohio, up the New River. And that's what I'm doing here today. I'm making a video. Just showing you where it happened. And the research I've done on the internet says that this is the place that it happened. And there is a creek that runs right down over the hill right over there. And this was, looks to me like one of the best places to set up a campsite and the cabins where these people could live and uh, all this flat land you see out through here. Somewhere over through there, I guess, is where William was off cutting his wheat, him and Jonathan, when this happened. So I'm going to take you on a journey down the river right now and show you some of the obstacles that Mary faced on her way back to her home, which was right here, which that, that the Indians did destroy. We're right here near the duck pond. Guys, just right down the road here. The old cabin place is not there anymore. It's a set, you know, it's been destroyed over the years. But anyway, right here, when uh, Mary got to this particular place at Eggleston, Virginia, at Eggleston Springs, Adam Harmon and his sons found her as she came up out of the her last place on the river and I can take you down there and, and uh, probably show you some of that but this is where it happened this is when she knew she was saved from her long journey on her way back home now just imagine that's the last rock cliff right over there on the other side of the river there that Mary had to climb over to come down before she could see Adam Harmon's cornfield and smoke coming out. Imagine climbing that naked. About five or six hundred miles later. But that's the side of the river she was on and that's the rock cliff that she had to make her way up above down here at Elliston. Of course, all this is private property down here now. So uh, we'll just take a look at it from right here. Now folks, by the time Mary and the old Dutch woman had reached Pembroke, which is where I'm at right now. The old Dutch woman was on one side of the river. That's the side where you see the big high rock. That's what she had to negotiate before she got up there to uh, Eggleston. And Mary was on that side of the river. It's flat right over there, but we know that's about 250 years ago, 300 years ago, so the river would have been up to where they would have had to, the old Dutch lady would have had to have climbed around that very large rock face if there wasn't a way to get around this river right here. So that's what they saw as they went up into that last canyon before they were rescued. 